so we have seen about the insect integument that is the exo exoskeleton or the external body wall which has an amorphous basement membrane on which there is a layer of epidermis which is of single cellular thickness and the amorphous layer that is the that is, uh, that is produced by the epidermal cells the body wall consists of the cellular layer as well as the non cellular layer that is the cuticle and the epidermis the cuticle has the exocuticle and the endocuticle together which forms the procuticle so over the procuticle we have the cuticulin layer in which we have different layers which are formed by the wax polyphenols and other long chain carbon compounds which give resistance to desiccation as well as loss of moisture from the environment so periodically the insect has to increase in its size so that is achieved by a process which is called as molting there is no scope of growth in the insects they cannot increase in their size unless and otherwise they shed the exo skeleton so the process of shedding of the exo skeleton is called as the molting and it is achieved by two steps by apolysis and egg dyes apolysis and egg dyes so insects mold periodically to increase in their size so the younger stages are the immature stages of the insects they can increase in their size by the process of molting whereas the adult insects they cannot molt once an adult is formed it will be having the same size and shape till the death but some exceptions are there the lower insect orders like the protura the columbola the thysanura and diplura these orders they can shed the cuticle even after becoming adults that's why they are considered to be the lower insects or the primitive insects so some of the insects they can also add the segments during successive molting this process is called as anamorphosis so the insects they will start with eight abdominal segments and after every mold they will add one segment to the abdomen that is called as the anamorphosis that is different from that of the metamorphosis metamorphosis is nothing but the gradual and sequential changes which occur in the life cycle of an organism from egg to adult stage whereas anamorphosis is the addition of abdominal segments during successive molting of the insects apart from insects other animals also they molt have you ever seen molting of other animals no frogs frogs they will they molt every week har hafta jo hai molting karte hain birds periodically they molt most of the animals which are living in the temperate areas they molt twice a year they will shed the hair during the summer and they will grow the hair during the summer to withstand the low temperatures so molting is seen in many of the higher animals 
also, but this is a rule in case of the insects. Moulting is the most crucial period of the insect. So, it is the very dangerous period of the insect during which there are all chances that the insect can die. But forcefully the insect has to undergo moulting, otherwise it will die. If it undergoes moulting, there are chances of death. If it does not undergo moulting, there are also chances of death. Because during the process of moulting, the insect becomes sedentary and it becomes very soft, it becomes very pliable, it becomes movementless, so that it is prone to the attack of the predators and the other natural enemies and it is also vulnerable to the attack by the temperature. So, it has to seek a place which is very safe for moulting. So, before moulting what happens? We have seen that the integument, it has a basement membrane and the exocuticle, endocuticle and this is the exocuticle and you have the epicuticle. exo and endo cuticle. The brain determines the moulting of the insect. So, insects have a poorly developed brain in the lower insects and a very well and highly developed brain in the higher insects. So, the brain what it does? it produces a hormone. So, when the insect completes 7 days, each and every insect the number of days for a moulting is almost fixed. After 7 days, it has to grow its size and it will go to the next instar. And after 7 days, it will go to the next instar. So, every instar it will mould and go to the next instar. And after completing the larval period, it will go to the pupal period in case of the higher insects, that is the endoterigote insects, or they will go to the adult after completing the nymphal period in case of the lower insects. So, what happens? The brain it will activate the gland, which is called as the pro thoracic gland so there is a pair of pro thoracic glands in the insects the brain will activate the pro thoracic glands by producing a hormone pt th that is the pro Pro thoracotrophic hormone that will stimulate the pro thoracic glands. So, after stimulation of the pro thoracic glands, it will produce the alpha ecdysone. So, this is the hormone which is responsible for moulting in the insects. The alpha ecdysone will go through the hemolymph. So, the insect body is a open system.
it will diffuse through the hemolymph and it will reach the epidermal cells and during the process of reaching the epidermal cells it becomes the beta in disome or the 20 hydroxy egg dice. So, the brain stimulates a pair of prothoracic glands which in turn produces the hormone that is the ecdysone which is in an inactive form that is the alpha ecdysone and it is converted to an active form that is the beta ecdysone or the 20 hydroxy ecdysone and this reaches the epidermal cells. Pro So, the alpha ecdysone is produced by the prothoracic glands <coughs> and it reaches the epidermal cells in the form of 20 hydroxy ecdysone or the beta ecdysone. So, this is what which acts in the epidermal cells. So, this induces the cells to produce a yeah, mounting gel. It induced it induced the epidermal cells to produce a mounting gel. This mounting gel consists of the chitinase and proteinase. So, is it clear? So, now the epidermal cells are activated to produce the mounting gel. So, now they have started producing the mounting gel. Then what happens? The The epidermal cells divide mitotically, proliferation, they will proliferously they will divide and they will increase in number and they will become closely packed and start producing the molting gel. And during this process, the old cuticle will separate from the epidermal cells. So, you have the exocuticle, the endocuticle and the cuticulin layer. So, the old cuticle it will start detaching from the epidermal cells due to which you can get a small space. This is called as
एक्सुवियल स्पेस और दाइसियल स्पेस सो वेन देपडर्मल सेल्स डिवाइड एंड स्टार्ट प्रोड्यूसिंग द माउल्टिंग जेल द वोल्डर क्यूटिकल विल डिटैच इट सेल्फ फ्रॉम द एपिडर्मल सेल्स एंड दैट फॉर्म्स ए स्मॉल स्पेस बिटवीन द लेयर ऑफ दैट इज द सिंगल और वन सेल थिक लेयर ऑफ द एपिडर्मल सेल एंड द वोल्डर क्यूटिकल सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज द एक्सुवियल स्पेस नाउ द एक्सुवियल स्पेस विल बी फिल्ड विद द माउल्टिंग जेल the exuvial space is filled with the molting gel containing the chitinase and proteinase but they will not start any action so that is an inactive molting gel which fills the gap or space between the older cuticle and the layer of epidermal cells the epidermal cells the epidermal cells they start producing the epicuticle they start producing the epi cuticle all the cells of the epidermis they are secretory in function they produce the epicuticle and make a layer of epicuticle consisting of the cuticulin layer over the epidermal cells now you are having iske upar kya hai you are having the molting gel which is in the inactive form you are having the older exocuticle and endocuticle and then exocuticle and the epi cuticle so gel procuticle and the epi cuticle so after producing the epi cuticle the molting gel will starts it action so it will digest it will start digesting the older cuticle the chitinase and proteinase in the molting gel it will digest the chitins and the proteins arthropodins sclerotin resin so you have different types of proteins in the cuticle that is the arthropodin which is a very hard protein then you have the sclerotin which is highly tanned protein which gives the color to the integument and you have the resin that is the elastic protein these proteinases they will digest all the proteins and the protein will be absorbed by the epidermal cells because they need the raw material for producing a newer cuticle to so, unko newer cuticle banane ke liye raw materials chahiye so those raw materials they are taken from the old cuticle to produce the new cuticle so now the older cuticle is digested and the materials are taken by the epidermal cells and now it will produce the new air cuticle this is the epicuticle you have the procuticle so now you have the newer cuticle
as well as the older cuticle. The older cuticle is 90 percent, it cannot digest the entire older cuticle. The 90 percent of the older cuticle is digested and the raw materials are taken by the epidermal cells and they have produced a newer cuticle. Why they produce the epicuticle first? Why they produced the epicuticle first? It is resistant to the action of the molting gel. It can digest only the older cuticle. It cannot come inside and it cannot digest the newer cuticle. That's why they produce the cuticulin layer of the epicuticle first to protect the newly formed cuticle and then they will start digesting the older cuticle. So now totally all the older cuticle it is digested. So older cuticle is totally digested and the newer cuticle is ready. So the insect has made the new cuticle but still it is resting inside the older cuticle which is paper like because most of the material has been digested and taken in by the epidermis. So it has to get rid of the older cuticle. The older cuticle is weak at different places wherever there is a joint. So they are called as the sutures. So wherever there is a suture, the older cuticle will be very weak. So the insect will go to a very safe place and it will take up lot of atmospheric air inside and it will increase in its size. Either by taking the atmospheric air inside the trachea, they will increase in the size or they will increase the pressure of the hemolymph by increasing the hydrostatic pressure inside. By either increasing the blood pressure or taking large amount of air inside, they will increase in their volume. So when they increase in the volume, the older cuticle will break at the places where there are sutures. So ultimately, the newer insect will come out of the older cuticle wherever there is a line of weakness. So thus the newer insect it will come out of the older cuticle. The cast older cuticle is called as the exuvia. So most of the insects they consume the cast cuticle or the older cuticle that is called as the exuvia. So then so this is the insect you have the So everything is which is of external or ectodermal in origin will be shed. The hind, hind gut, the fore gut, the integument, everything will be lost. At the forehead, they will have an epicranial suture. So from this, the insect will. will come out. So the insect will come out of the old cuticle mainly through the neck or thorax or through the head. You have different types of sutures. There is a Y shaped suture that is the epicranial through which the insect will come out. So after the insect comes out of the older cuticle, just before the insect comes out, it is called as a ferrate insect. So this insect is called as a ferrate. 
So once it comes out, it is a neonate. So aane ke pehle, it's a ferret. It is ready for coming. Neo means new. Once it comes, it is a new insect. So immediately after the insect comes out of the cast skin or the exuvia, it is very soft, very pliable, pale in color, it will be transparent and it is prone and vulnerable to the attack of vagaries of weather and the natural enemies. So what happens immediately the insect has to struggle and it has to make itself fit to survive in the environment. So it will start a process which is called as the hardening and darkening process. hardening and darkening process. The hardening process is the sclerotization. Hardening is the sclerotization that is the formation of the protein that is sclerotin and tanning is the formation of tannins. So you have Ferret is the adult within the old larval skin. Molting ke pehle, purana skin bhi usme hota hai, uske andar naya insect bhi hota. That is a ferret insect. So once it comes out of the older skin, then it is called as the neonate insect. So we have a hormone in the insect. Brain hormone. It controls the amino acid that is the tyrosine. Tyrosine is the only amino acid which is controlled by the hormone. The brain hormone controls or uh, it will give signal to The amino acid that is the tyrosine, it is an aromatic amino acid containing the benzene ring. So this will be converted to The tyrosine, the tyrosine glucoside is present in the insects. That is a reversible reaction. The tyrosine group glucosides, they will produce the tyrosine. And in the hemolymph, the tyrosine will be converted to a compound, which is called as DOPA or the dihydroxyphenylalanine. So it will be converted to an amide that is the dopamine that is the dihydroxy phenyl alanine amide and this dopamine will be either converted to acetyl Or alanyl dopamine. So the amino acid is triggered by the hormone which is converted to a compound that is dihydroxyphenyl alanine and this is converted into either acetyl dopamine or the alanyl dopamine and they will go into the cuticle. They will go into the cuticle.
the epidermal cells they are triggered to produce these compounds they go and interlink they go and interlink the proteins which are present in the cuticle to give rigidity or elasticity or plasticity to the cuticle depending upon the presence of the protein like either chitin or arthropodin or resilin so depending upon the type of protein either the the cuticle will be soft or it will be hard or it will be tan or it will be pliable so this both alanine as well as acetyl dopamine they will interlink these proteins to form a matrix the proteins will be there in the cuticle the dopa amines they will become the methyls and they will go and interlink all the proteins to give a structure to the cuticle so this forms the hardening of the cuticle then the protein sclerotin is formed and it will give a dark color to the cuticle those insects which live in light they will have a dark body wall those live in darkness they will not have a dark complexion they will always be pale they will always be light and they will be losing the visual characters so with the help of the amino acid and dopa dopamine and the quinones so these are converted to the quinones they are together called as the quinones and these quinones they will interlink the proteins to form a compact structure in the integument so thus the insect will initiate the molting and it will produce the molting gel which is inactive and then start producing the epicuticle layer then the molting gel will digest the older cuticle and in the meantime the insect will produce a new year cuticle consisting of the pro cuticle as well as the epicuticle and the epicuticle first the cuticle layer will be formed and after the production of the new year cuticle step by step it will produce all the layers of the epicuticle like cement layer wax layer and then polyphenol layer so after that the old cuticle will be removed by the process that is the ecdysis wherever there is a point of weakness the insect will try to break the older cuticle either by taking up atmospheric air or by increasing the hydrostatic pressure and wherever the cuticle breaks it will come out of the older cuticle and most of the insects they will consume the older cuticle so that nothing is left as a waste all the raw materials they will be taken again and that will be digested in the insects the ferret insects that will come out of the cuticle and the stage between successive molting of an insect is called as an instar the stage between successive molting is called as an instar for example this is a larva and it will molt to a bigger larva so this is called as first instar and it is called as second in star so once the egg hatches the larva which comes out of the egg is called as the first in star and after growing for a certain period of time it has to molt to go to the next size and next stage so that is called as the second in star so likewise some of the insects they will go up to five in stars and then they will become 
pupa then it will become an adult some insects the lower insects they will go to 13 stages first in stalk nymph second in stalk nymph so likewise every molting it is called as an in stalk and the time gap between every molting is called as a stadium So this is the instar and the time between the molting is called as the stadium. The time is the stadium and the stage is called as the instar. So some of the coleopterous beetles, they will be living for two years as larvae. They will molt for 100 times. And some of the lower insects, they will also molt for 30 to 40 times. Most of the butterflies, moths, they will mold for four or five times and they will become the pupa. And one more thing you have to note, the next stage, whether a larva has to go to a larva or whether a larva has to go to a pupa or whether the pupa has to become an adult. So these are also determined by set of hormones. You have already read the zone and one more hormone is there that is called as the Juvenile hormone and egg dysone. These are the two major hormones which will determine the type of mouth. So this is the mouthing or egg dysis. A larva will mouth to a larva. Or a larva will mouth to a pupa. Or a pupa will mouth to a adult. If juvenile hormone is more, juvenile hormone is more, then larva will mount to a larva. If both are equal, then larva will mount to a pupa. If only egg dysone is there, then pupa will mount to a adult. So this is called as the tighter values between egg dysone and the juvenile hormone. The amount of or the ratio of the egg dysone and juvenile hormone will determine the type of mould as to whether a larva has to mould to a larva or a larva has to mould to a pupa or a pupa has to mould to an adult. So in insects you can see a second instar larva can again mould to a first instar larva. Bade hone ke baad, phir chote ho sakte. Some insects are there. If there is absence of food, khana agar nahi mil raha hai, so a higher instar can mould to a lower instar. So this is called as the recessive moulting. So after becoming higher in stars, the insects can come to a lower in star by recessive molting. You can see in some of the lower termites. So they can come to a lower stage to avoid the dearth of food. So this also is seen in some cases. So if you have any doubt, you can ask, is it clear?